All right, so this, of course, is what is happening at the moment. There appears to be a space race, in fact, a race to head over to the moon. And to give us more perspective as to why this is playing out at this moment, we're being joined by Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, joining us live from Washington, D.C. Uh, now, Dr. Ghosh, this, this is an important moment. You know, ever since India managed to land its Chandrayaan-3 Vikram lander successfully on the south pole of the moon, there's been a lot of talk about what happens next. We've just witnessed the images that have been put out by ISRO of the Pragyan rover that exited from the Vikram lander and is now carrying out in situ experiments. Give us a sense of what's, what's actually happening, what kind of experiments are being conducted there. Right now has um, gone down the ramp and um, it is driving around. Uh, it's possibly going to make some analysis and using the alpha proton extreme spectrometer and the um, other laser instrument and then they are going to probably downlink the data as in get the data back and then they are going to look at the data and based on that they are going to continue to drive or do more analysis at this spot so this is going to go on for a few um, days and remember the here the timeline is 14 days after which it's the lunar night where temperatures become very cold and you don't have uh, solar rays anymore to light up the areas. So there's no power generation. So at that point, probably the mission will end. Absolutely indeed. Uh, and also, Dr. Ghosh, uh, you know, the very first time that humans, in fact, landed on the surface of the moon was way back in 1969 when Neil Armstrong became the first man to step on the surface of the moon. But since then, there have been quite a few decades that the interest to, in fact, go to the moon perhaps did not materialize. What is it that now we're looking at so many of these nations around the world who all are planning to head over to the moon again? So uh, I guess when the U.S. stopped going to the moon, it had um, spent a huge amount of money, had a huge, a huge amount of um, um, people, uh, resources, and then they decided, well, we should perhaps do something different. That's when the International Space Station came into being. International Space Station is a sort of a structure about 250 miles from Earth, where uh, we stayed for maybe 30 years. We're still there. Then the thought was when President Bush um, started his term, I think in 2004, the thought was, well, let's go back to the moon and set up a base there. Then there was some thought, perhaps, uh, that, well, maybe we have been to the moon and then we should go to Mars. So during President Obama's administration, there was a push from Mars. And then there were widespread studies. The, what came out of that, we, we perhaps realized that Mars is 200 million miles away. Right. Moon, in contrast, is 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 mi million miles away. So Mars was not practical and very expensive. So then we came back to the moon of when President Trump again came to power. So right now, the push to the moon is because it is very close, just three days away. And it's, it's the right place to demonstrate technologies and uh, even set up a habitation module like the uh, International Space Station. Mm -hmm. um, and so that would what you would perhaps see just for the next 20, 30 years. And right. I want to make a small point about, about the space race that you mentioned earlier. Uh -huh. It's very different from the 60s, where it was a real race. Uh -huh. um, uh, U.S. and Russia were going at it as a, in a military perspective. Right now, it is like, you know, if cell phones become cheap and doable, everybody's buying a cell phone. doesn't mean everybody's racing each other. So right now, what you're seeing is right. technology is more affordable and it is doable, multiple countries and private entities are going to go to the moon. It doesn't mean that everybody is trying to outdo and race each other. So it is just that it will become more widespread than it was before. All right, very the lunar interesting. Missions. Uh, and also, Dr. Ghosh, uh, you know, um, I, I want you to weigh in a bit on this. You know, ever since Elon Musk put out that idea of his, that he wants to colonize Mars, but as you mentioned, Mars is fairly far away and moon is much more closer. In your estimate, do you think it is much easier for humans to, in fact, set up some kind of a colony on the moon first before we head over to the Mars, or how does it work? Yes. So the, so let's... It depends on the de definition of the word colony. If you think that humans here will march out in droves and settle on the moon, that's not going to happen. What is going to happen 
is there'll be habitation modules set up on the moon. So you and I are actually sitting in habitation modules, you in New Delhi and I am in Washington, D.C. It's air-conditioned, it has shelter, um, it has light. So in the moon, in addition, you'll have oxygen. And um, if you think of uh, the plane that you ride on when you go from Delhi to um, Calcutta or Delhi to Bombay, that's also a module which pressurized. If you went out of the um, aircraft, the temperature is minus 60, I think, and the pressure is very, very low. So that's also a, so, so a habitation module like that could, could very reasonably set, be set up on the moon. And Jeff Bezos' company, Blue Origins, is trying to do exactly that. So that is that is doable. But, you know, like 100 million people moving out or 100,000 people moving. So that, that's, that's not going to, I think, happen. All right. Very interesting. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Ghosh, for joining us and getting us all those details there. Thank you.